Um, mm -hmm. Michelle, it's Joe. Real quick on the unemployment rate sure. itself, and take this as a compliment. I'm not sure if you remember 1981 or if you were born yet or not, but if you <laughs> go back, we rose above 8% in Q4 of 1981, and we stayed above there for 24 months. Right. The scenario we're in now, first quarter of 2009, we get above 8%. When do we drop below 8%? Is it going to be a 24-month protracted period where the unemployment rate stays sticky above 8%? We think it's going to be at least that. Um, we're looking for the unemployment rate to peak close to where we are now between 10 2 and 10.5 in the next few months, but we don't see it falling sharply after that. We think it's going to take a while um, to bring that unemployment rate lower. So in our view, we'll have above 9% unemployment next year and above 8% unemployment uh, in 2011. It's Karen. I just want to second what Joe said. You do look, is this like an after school job for you or something? You do look really young. But I want to ask you, in the past, the ISM, when that gets over 50 and expansionary again, how quickly does uh, employment follow that? Or do they not necessarily correlate it? It does correlate quite well. There's not a defined lag per se. Uh, but typically, once you see that, that employment index move into expansion territory, you should see manufacturing payrolls pick up. Um, one thing you might see first is a manufacturing work week pick up. We've already started to see that. So you want to look at aggregate hours in the manufacturing sector. Um, and then you might start to see payrolls increase. All right, Michelle, going to leave it there. Thanks for being such a good sport. You're <laughs> lucky to look so young. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle you. Myers of Barclays. All right.